Hey everyone, welcome back to I Dream of Indie. Old Gamer Joe coming at you with another review today. We are looking at Dandy Ace for the PC Steam platform. It will be releasing on July 28th of 2020 and comes from developer and publisher Mad Mimic. It is an action indie roguelike dungeon crawler. No price available at the time of this review. However, there is a demo over on Steam that you can check out if you want to try it for yourself. The story of Dandy Ace revolves around the green-eyed illusionist who is the villain of this title that is quite jealous of Dandy Ace, the lead character that you'll play as. The green-eyed illusionist is so jealous of Dandy Ace, in fact, that he makes a deal with a cursed mirror that will take his soul in exchange for the use of this mirror's powers. He then uses that mirror to trap Dandy Ace and a few of his friends in the mirror world. So Dandy Ace must battle his way through this mirror world in order to get to the green-eyed illusionist and become free again. Gameplay takes place from a 2D isometric view and heavily revolves around the use of cards, which I thought was a pretty interesting mechanic. You can equip up to four of these cards, one for each face button that you have on your controller, if you are playing with a controller, and you'll collect more cards as you progress through the various labyrinths that are thrown your way. There is quite the variety of different cards in Dandy Ace, including simplistic ones that will make you feel like Gambit out of the X-Men, where you'll just be tossing cards at enemies. But there's also some more large-scale attacks, including a Cyclone, which will circle around your character and damage all of the enemies within that circle. You'll find three of these random cards at the beginning of each run in Dandy Ace and it's up to you where you want to equip them so the button mapping can vary depending on your preference. There's no dedicated dodge button in this title however you will have to have a card equipped that will allow you to dodge and there's a variety of different dodges some of which can cause damage to your enemies as you dash through them. Of course, as you traverse through these various labyrinths, you'll come across more chests that contain cards and you'll be able to equip them at your own free will. Some of these cards are higher tiers than other ones. Generally speaking, the higher tier cards are better for you to equip. I found that the success of your initial run can often be determined by those first three random cards. So if you don't like the cards that you've received, you might die pretty quickly. Ultimately though, I found it was a ton of fun to experiment with all of the different cards that you can equip and the ones that you're not using anymore, eventually you can get a perk where you're allowed to sell them for gold. But the main gameplay has you exploring this map, going off in different directions sometimes, and maybe even finding a key which can unlock a gate, and taking out large groups of enemies. Of course you can run from these enemies in certain instances, however sometimes you will be locked in by gates and have to clear that room. But do understand that running will not only deny you gold, it will also deny you the chance of earning shards. These shards are crucial to your success in Dandy Ace, as they are pumped into various upgrades that will carry over from run to run. As you progress through each map successfully completing one, you'll eventually come to a rest area of sorts where your friends are also trapped, and you'll want to talk to Jolly Jolly, a character who allows you to use your shards. You'll need to carefully choose what you want to spend these shards on, as the abilities that they unlock can be really helpful as you go forward. You may for example want to unlock a perk that will help you to earn more gold. Now I should mention too that gold is used throughout the labyrinths as well if you happen to stumble across a shop, and of course having a good amount of gold on you can lead to you being able to purchase more powerful spells. Or you may want to invest in teapots. Teapots are basically your healing potion in this game. You'll start out by being able to unlock one teapot, but eventually as you get more and more shards, you can choose to upgrade and get more teapots so that you can heal more than once on a run. Outside of that, another girl in this area named Jenny Jenny runs a shop where you can purchase trinkets. An example of these trinkets is the Tea Party Trinket, which will allow for you to earn 30% more of your health back by drinking a potion. Or another example is a trinket that will bring you back to life with one hit point left should you run out of health. Overall, while you will die as you would expect a lot in this game, it really does feel rewarding to earn these shards and continually feel like you're getting stronger. But the real fun of Dandy Ace is definitely in experimenting with all the different combinations of cards. It really is a blast. Graphically, I would say I enjoyed the look of Dandy Ace. It definitely looks a little bit different from other titles out there, and I can appreciate the art aesthetic that they've chosen. I like the actual setting that this game takes place in, inside a mystical mirror. Some of the enemy designs are interesting and unique, and I enjoyed the different patterns that they'll throw your way, and I enjoyed the cartoony look of the characters. It's an interesting mix with the backdrop. I've honestly always been a big fan of both magicians and magic in general, so this setting really worked for me. I do think though that the soundtrack is a little bit of a missed opportunity. It doesn't really fit as well as I would hope for this game. It's kind of a weird mix of electronica and techno. If I'm being honest with you, I kind of zoned out and wasn't even paying attention to it. It does fall into the background pretty easily, though the sound effects of the title get the job done. They're also not exceptional.
so I really did like the graphical presentation of Dandy Ace, but I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of its audio design. But more importantly, I really was a fan of how Dandy Ace plays. It's a lot of fun to go through runs over and over again, despite the fact that it can be challenging and you're going to repeat areas. I found the shard system rewarding, and the fact that you can run from some battles if you so wish is actually helpful in your progression at times. Now there is a perk that can speed your character up a bit in this title, but I maybe would have set that as the default as I felt like Dandy Ace was a little bit slow. Regardless, this is a really fun experience. I think roguelike fans will have a lot of fun going through it. It is a challenging game, but it's not pull your hair out challenging like this genre tends to be at times. Dandy Ace is not all smoke and mirrors. It's a fun and rewarding experience that I highly recommend. So will you be checking out Dandy Ace? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed our review today, consider hitting the subscribe button as well as pushing that bell notification so that you can help us to bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. There's also a ton of other ways to support I Dream of Indie, including hopping into the Discord down in the description box. However you end up supporting us though, we thank you so much for doing so.